How do we make a living out in the middle of nowhere? One of the questions that we get on a fairly regular basis is how do we make a living out in the middle of nowhere? Now we live on 43 acres and we're only about 10, 15 miles of town. But to be honest, there's nothing much there. Post office, family dollar, a couple of convenience stores. There's no place to get a job. When we moved here, there were actually, I think seven quarries that were open in the area and they employed a couple hundred people at least. Uh, and that includes office staff and everything else. And then the last time the economy really tanked a few years ago, all of them but two closed. So we went from a pretty vibrant small town that was gradually getting more stuff going on it and stuff like that to pretty much nothing. And it's closest place where you could get a job would be Williams or Paulden, Chino, you know, figure an hour minimum drive each way. So I have a business of my own. It's a little jewelry business that specializes in um, supplies for historic reenactors. And I get all kinds of odd requests sometimes. And one of my big things that I do is I cast things. Most of the things I cast are artifacts, re reproductions of artifacts. But I occasionally do odd pieces. Um, this little piece here is actually part of a brooch. And last year, a lady came into my shop and said, I'm getting married next year. I want some favors for my medieval-themed wedding. And I'm like, okay, what are you looking for? Uh, because I'll never say yes until I know I can do it. And, and I need to know how many and I need to know when and all that other stuff. And she said, uh, okay, uh, June of next year and I'll get back in touch with you at the beginning of the year, which she did. But we did talk about what she was looking for. And basically she's looking for these little brooches. Um, this is normally the front of the brooch, but I can flip them over and use it as the back of the brooch. And I do sometimes, and I'll stamp letters on here to say things. I There's a bunch of uh, mostly 14th century French or Latin sayings that were very commonly used in the, during the Middle Ages um, as good luck tokens or as, you know, love tokens or whatever. And she wants a specific saying on hers. And she wants a specific saying here and then on the back, she wants her initials, her husband's initials, and the year in Roman numerals. So that means I have to cast a bunch of these. And I decided that since this needs to be smoothed out, instead of sitting there and sanding every single piece, which would actually make the piece too thin and a bit fragile, I need to make a new mold to be able to cast these easily and at a reasonable amount of expense for myself and keep the price down for her. So in order to make a new mold, I have to have a new model and that means I have to carve wax. So I'll take you through the whole project. It'll take a couple of parts because we don't want a 3000 year old, 3000 minute video here, but let's get started. Okay. I'm going to move the mug. <laughs> now, this is a special type of wax uh, that is designed for creating models. It has just the right characteristics. That means it carves well, it um, is stiff enough, but not so stiff that it breaks easily. So, what I have to do first is I have to make this smooth. And the way we do that is we sand it. 
Now, the way we sand it is we simply use a sanding block, just like the ones you'd use for sanding wallboard. This is what the side looks like really before it's sanded. It has little grooves on it from the saw that cut it. Now, I did not cut this. This was pre-cut by the manufacturer. Let's see. I can see one line on there. That's it. And I think I can avoid that one. Okay, I'll try the other side now. Now, the other side was just as rough as the first one. Okay, now that was step one. Step two is I have my original. Now what I have to decide is I, whether I want to copy this original exactly or whether I want to improve on it. That's a good question. I think I, my answer is probably improve on it. So, because it's a little lopsided. So the way we improve on it, while still keeping the basic shape, is we copy it. Uh, in case you're wondering what that is, that little dent there on both sides is where a pin goes on so that you can attach this to yourself. If this is what they call a pin annular brooch. It's a form that's not usually used anymore. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is through the magic of scissors. This is just like when we were little kids and we would make a heart by folding something in half. I'm going to cut just inside the line. of my band is not uniform. So I'd like to fix that too. So let's see. Ah, eight millimeters. Okay. Now sometimes people ask why I'll use millimeters instead of inches. And that's because it's easier. <laughs> A lot for certain things, it's just plain easier. Okay, now I trimmed off the outside of that just a little. Now it fits much better on here. Now, this is wax, so it's not going to want to stay. But tape will always stick to itself. shape that's carved in there. If you look closely at this, you notice that it's a very unusual saw blade. It's actually a spiral. And this is a saw blade that's designed for sawing wax. Now it's time to clean the shape up. 
it's nice and wobbly, but you can see it is a heart. So now I'm going to use my sandpaper again and I'm going to smooth the outside. So basically what has happened is I have gotten the outside of the heart to the correct shape. And now it's time to switch to working on the inside of the heart, which I'm going to need a special set of files to do. So I have to go get those now and then we'll come back later.